Today we're going to be checking out the Base Charge 1500 portable power station from BioLite, and this is going to be a great option for those of you who want to bring home grade power and charging capabilities off grid, whether it's for a camping or an overlanding trip, remote work for power outages, or if you just want to be able to bring power where there is none, so you can keep devices charged and run things like power tools and other devices. This power station can perform some pretty impressive feats, and today we're going to be taking a look at its features and performing a few tests of the power station, so you can get a better idea of its true performance capabilities. But before we dive in, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. The Base Charge 1500 has a 1521 watt hour lithium ion battery, and this is the highest capacity power station that I've ever reviewed, and it weighs in right around 26 pounds, but it's not too bulky, and it does have two recessed handles which do make the device a bit easier to carry. This device probably has the best display that I've ever seen on any power station, and it gives you a tremendous amount of information about the current status of the device. On the left, you'll get an estimate of the remaining runtime based on your current output, and later on in the video we'll put this to the test to see how accurate it is. You can also see the remaining battery life as a percentage, which is pretty handy, and beneath that you also get a resettable odometer of sorts, which will tell you exactly how much power you used, and this will come in handy when you're trying to estimate how much power you might need to perform certain tasks based on your previous experiences. To the right you can see the input and output in watts which ports are turned on, and some basic info about the temperature and the wireless charging status. The Base Charge 1500 does give you a great selection of ports, including a car style DC output and two DC barrel ports. Beneath that, you've got yourself a charging input that's compatible with the included wall charger, which we'll be testing out in the next section, or a solar panel, which you can pick up separately. You get a nice selection of USB input ports, including two Type A's and two Type C's. And to the right of that, there's a USB-C PD100 watt port, which is a two-way port which can not only rapidly charge your devices, but it can also be used to charge the base charge as well. Finally, there's three 110 volt AC outputs, which have a max output of 1200 watts with a 2400 watt surge. And we're gonna be testing this out with a few different gadgets later on in the video. On top, there's a nice big wireless charging deck with a 10 watt output. And this is a really easy way to charge your phone and you don't have to worry about carrying cables, which is very convenient. All right, so for this first test, I drained the battery completely and we'll see how long it takes to charge up to 100%. First, I plugged in the wall adapter and on the display, you can see the current battery life is zero. And now we're charging at right around 120 watts and it's estimating that it will take about 11 hours or so to charge. Now I'm gonna plug in a USB-C to the PD port to supplement the charging speeds and the input jumped up to about 128 watts. I began charging at about 2.20 p.m. and it finished charging right around 1.15 a.m. So total charging time was about 10 hours and 55 minutes. The USB-C wall charger I'm using is an older model, so it's not the fastest. So if you have a better wall charger, you'll probably get more watts than me and you might be able to shave a few hours off of this time. And on the product page, it says that it will take about 13.5 hours to charge with the wall charger and about eight hours to charge with a combination of USB-C and the wall charger. Large capacity power stations do typically take quite a few hours to charge. So considering that, it does actually charge relatively quickly compared to the smaller power stations that I've tested in the past. All right, so one test I wanna perform with the Base Charge 1500 is a fridge runtime test. So what I'm gonna do is unplug my fridge from the wall outlet and plug it into the base charge and see how long it can run. And this is gonna replicate an event that might be a likely scenario for you if your power goes down temporarily because you're gonna to wanna to plug in your fridge to help prevent your food and your frozen items from going bad. The power station is fully charged and now the fridge is plugged in. So we'll see how long it can last for. Right now, the display is giving me an estimate of 77 hours, but this is a very difficult thing to determine because the power consumption of the fridge will adjust based on the internal temperature and it will go on and off many times throughout the course of the test but we'll see how close the estimation actually is. We're gonna start this test on Saturday morning at 7.30 a.m. and it was able to keep the fridge running until about 1.05 a.m. So the total runtime for the fridge was about 17 hours and 25 minutes. Throughout the day, we must have opened the fridge at least a dozen or more times, which is pretty typical use for my family. And overall, I think the performance was actually really good here and would definitely help keep your food fresh during a short-term grid down scenario. And if you're careful about not opening the fridge too often, you'd probably be able to squeeze a few more hours of runtime from the setup. We've got the battery charged back up and it's a chilly morning today in my office garage. So I thought it would be a good excuse to plug in a portable space heater to see how well the Base Charge 1500 can handle it. So I set it to its highest setting and right after I turn it on, the internal cooling system kicked right on. And from the start, I'm really impressed that the Base Charge was even able to power on this heater. 
because I have tested this heater with a handful of other power stations and none of them were able to run it. So this feed alone is very impressive and it's giving me an estimate of roughly one hour of runtime. So we'll see how close it is to that time as well. This heater is very power hungry and output is right around 1250 watts. And the base charge is rated for a max output of 1200 watts and a 2400 watt surge. So it's right in that range. The test started at 7.32 a.m. and it was able to run the space heater until 8.25 a.m. for a grand total of 53 minutes. And based on the runtime and watts, my testing showed that the power station had about 1104 watt hours of usable energy, which is a few hundred watt hours shy of the 1521 watt hour capacity listed on the product page. However, my testing was definitely a bit on the extreme side and the base charges internal cooling fans were forced to kick on immediately. So if you use lower watt devices, you'd probably be able to squeeze a few hundred more usable watt hours from the base charge. Overall, I think it's a great power station, but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you wanna pick one up and support the channel, there's a link down in the description below. I'll also link to some other power stations and solar panel tests in case you wanna check out some other smaller models. Also, we just drew the winner for January's giveaway of the Ace Beam P16 Defender tactical flashlight. And the winner was Craftsome1 who followed on Instagram. Thanks a lot to everyone who participated and for February, I'm giving away the Ammo Torch XT35 tactical flashlight, which you might remember from my tactical 18650 comparison video from a few months ago. And to enter to win, all you need to do is like the Goodnight Gear page on Facebook and just leave a comment on our new arrivals and February giveaway post, which is linked to down below.